Hello, I'm Karen and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make this cute little lavender mouse. Now, I know it just looks like an ordinary mouse, but it's actually filled with lavender. So it smells really nice. It's lovely for putting inside your drawers to make them smell nice. Or you can just stuff it just with plain stuffing and use it as a pin cushion. Or you can add um, a tail on it so that you can actually make it so it's a dangly thing for a mouse toy. Okay, so I'm just going to put these to one side. Now you're actually going to need um, an old tumble dryer sheet or an old colour catching sheet. Um, some dried lavender, I'm just using an old pot just to keep that in. Some stuffing. Um, I actually use a permanent marker pen for the eyes. You're going to need a 4mm crochet hook, your scissors and of course your needle and then and today I'm using the lavender yarn which well, is more of a lilac if I'm honest and white but you can use any colour combination you like I've made mine I've made a silver one I've made a pink one um, and obviously the blue one <laughs> the blue one matches the owl Do -do -do. <laughs> anyway let's just get on with this pattern and then what I would do is um, or crochet the first little bit which is all counting the stitches together and then after that um, I will give you a little catch up on what has happened and why I haven't done any videos for a while and why all my videos um, was unavailable for a few weeks okay so I'm going to I'm starting off with doing my twist you can actually do um, a slip knot if you prefer okay so I'm going to do this uh, just twist it around anti-clockwise hold on to the bottom of the yarn the same way as you would if you've done a slip knot and we're going to chain three that's one two three we're going to skip the very first chain and work a single crochet underneath one loop of the, each of the remaining chains so we end up with two single crochet like that then we're going to chain one turn and for this row we're working two single crochet that's if you're in the US the double crochet if you're in the UK so that's one two in each of these stitches so we have a total of four and the end stitch is always a little bit fiddly to get into on this particular pattern here because you're doing the increases so now we've got four <coughs> chain one and turn and from now on we're going to do two single crochet in the first stitch so there's my two then we're going to do a single crochet in the remaining stitches and just two in the end so it's actually going to go up two four six eight all the way up to 14 so this is two three four and just finding the end bit there and we're doing two in the end which makes six chain one and turn and we'll do one two in the first stitch then we're going to keep on counting three I'm sorry I've got myself tangled up there four five six and the last stitch there look it's always hiding on this um, increase seven eight chain one turn two in the first stitch one two I just need to pull some more yarn oh uh oh what a tangle <laughs> it's okay and um, where am I two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this stitch is always tipped over because it's it was an increase. <clears throat> Nine, ten, chain one, turn and we do whoops two in the first stitch 
and then one in the rest so that's three four five six seven eight nine ten and I need to do two in the end I'm just going to put my hook in but I'm not working my stitches yet I just need to pull some more yarn <clears throat> eleven twelve this is the last row of increase now so two in the first stitch one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and the very end stitch there which is tipped over. 13, 14. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And as you can see, you've got sort of like a little triangular fan shape. Now what I do is because I like to leave the long tail ends is I just tuck my tail end over. This is just so that it's easier for me just to count because then I can just count my rows after this and um because now I need to do seven rows of plain single crochet all the way across. I'm just going to count this row again just to make sure because it's easy to miss that end stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13. <clears throat> you see how that stitch looks, it looks kind of hidden there. We need to do one more in there underneath the two strands to make our 14. And from now onwards, it'll just be easier and we can just work straight into each of the stitches. So now we're on, I've got six rows to do and while I'm doing these six rows I'm going to explain to you um, a little bit about what happened. So first of all I want to say thank you to everybody that actually stayed subscribed to me while my videos was all private. Um, I really really do appreciate it and I appreciate all of your lovely comments, those that are saying like are you okay and, and um, like we miss you and then when they noticed that I came back, it's like, yeah, she's back. Thank you very much. And it was absolutely lovely. Um, and I want to explain to you that I'm sorry I didn't reply to anybody. I'm, I feel inundated, actually, that I get a lot. Um, it's a lot for me to deal with. But at the time, when you was all saying all those lovely things, I just kept reading your messages and kept crying. Because I was so sad that all my videos were um, unavailable to be watched. Now... It was my fault that I put all my videos private, but it was also part of a process that I was going through because, um, as you you just you just watch you just watch YouTube, you don't realise some of the things that go go on in the background. And one of the things that happened is that a while ago they changed the algorithms, and they've got this little Google bot that checks all of your videos, and if it thinks you've done something wrong. What it does is it it marks your video. Now, when I first came across those marks, I didn't know that it was because I wasn't getting paid um, because it actually makes your little icon go gold. And you're like, ooh, I feel really special. No, you're not. <laughs> you're just not getting paid. And so what you have to do is you have to send off these little request things and get your videos individually watched. Now, as you may know, I've got uh, over 160 videos. So... Um, and as my videos was being approved over the first two weeks and I only got 14 or so videos 
um, approved, I was like, uh-oh, this is going to take like six months for me to get all my videos back. And that's when it sort of really hit me that I was unemployed. I was getting, wasn't getting paid. I'm jobless. And um, all these things went through in my mind. And I was just so, so miserable. And I think things, you know how you, you do. Some things on their own, they're not so bad. But when you've got a bundle of things together, that's when things sort of get a little bit overwhelming. And I'd been doing... Um, some spring cleaning and as I'd reached up to I was doing the net curtains actually you know taking the nets down as you do and, and washing them to give everything up just to freshen up so that it was all nice after all the Christmas holiday and winter and I hurt my shoulder and I, you know I thought it was just I just pulled a little bit of a muscle and I thought I'd be okay Um the following day after I did that, my neighbours needed me to move my car because um, I'd actually moved my car for my other neighbours because they'd got company and then um, I needed to move my car back again because my other neighbours needed access to their garden. And um, driving my car forwards was perfectly fine to move it out of the way. But to put it back, I needed to turn my car around. And that's when I realised how much I actually really had hurt my shoulder because... I went up the curb not only did I go up the curb once I actually went up the curb twice and I was so embarrassed I thought you know if my neighbors can see me they look like I, I look like I'm drunk um but it was just I've just been taking some painkillers and I just hurt my shoulder and I was like whoa <laughs> okay then like I'm not driving for a while um so uh, I didn't I ended up having things like my shopping delivered and stuff like that and I've only done a little bit of driving since because each time I thought that my shoulder is feeling fine, or I've, I'll just do the slightest little thing and I've got some kind of strange pain. So I'm not quite sure um, what I've done, but I've just got to keep doing my exercises, <clears throat> keep taking some different painkillers and, um, and just persevering. So, um, and I think that that just made things worse, you know, because I was actually hurting with a physical pain. And then things went wrong with my YouTube channel. So I do apologise. I'm very, very sorry. I just I thought the best thing to do is just to put everything private and just give myself a break from everything. And then once everything was all sorted out, I'll, I'll put my videos back. But it's taking time for me to actually see any difference. Um, and I've noticed a considerable difference in the income part of it. But... I suppose that's part and parcel of actually doing YouTube. You know, I suppose it's the same with any any job. You never know whether the person that you're actually working for is actually, everything's going to be okay and whether they're still going to employ you. So it was a little bit of a strange thing to have to go through. But I've got through it. I'm on the other side now. And I thought, I'll just do my little mouse just to, it's just a little video just to sort of get me back into the swing of things. So this was my first row here. So as you can see, I've done two, four, six. I'm going to just do one more row. And I'll tell you a little story about this actual pattern because when I actually very first came across this pattern, um, oh, this has got to be like 2010, maybe even 2009. And it was a free pattern to crochet, a lovely little mouse and when I started to follow the instructions, it was huge. <laughs> it was definitely a rat and not a mouse. So this is one of the very first patterns I ever altered. But as you can see, it was just it, this is just a basic, a really, really basic pattern. So, um, <clears throat> and I thought, well, how can I make this be that little bit more different? You know, because there's plenty of people have crocheted mouse, mouses, <laughs> I was gonna say mouses. <laughs> mice um on youtube and obviously mine's not nowhere near as cute as some of the other the other ones out there but um i just wanted to make it different so i'm just i have to stop talking at the minute i'm much complete chatterbox i'm going to pull this tail end out now and what i'm going to do is just going to fold over the piece that we've made it looks like this look it's sort of like um 
don't know, almost like a nappy actually. <laughs> oh dear me. But anyway, um, yeah, let's just let's just carry on with what I'm doing. I'm just making matters worse. I know I am. So what you do is you fold over your work and you make sure, and if I can try and get the angle right, you make sure that you've got you've got like little bits where it goes in and then you've got little bumps that come out. You want those to match because we're going to slip stitch um, all the way down the side to make sure it matches. So and I, I don't go into the top stitch, it's the second one down and then underneath that one there. So you're doing the same stitch each side so it matches. It will leave you a little gap at the top, that's okay because that sort of fits in with what we do a bit later on. And then we're going to go underneath like a, a lumpy bit. <laughs> oh, I'm making it sound really bad, aren't I? You can tell I'm out of practice. <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to slip stitch all the way down. Just do it, you need to do it reasonably tight, but not, you don't want to pull it too tight. It's, it's just all, I suppose, it's all to do with the tension thing. Just try and make sure that it's nice and neat. And just, it is purely slip stitching. And as you can see, this one is a, a little bit fiddly there. I think I may have caught my yarn. It's like a hook's got stuck. There we go. And just slip stitching all the way to the end. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, I um, I decided. Well, I'm going to fill my mouse with lavender then, and then you know it's like. I mean, you don't have to fill it with lavender. You can fill it with any kind of herb that you like. You can, and then what you can do is actually you can. Um, if you make them with the, um, I don't know what to call this, this is the dangly bit, <laughs> this just sounds even worse, but you can hang it on your tap, so you can have it under the tap so that it's scenting your bath water if you want to, oh my days, I tell you I'm not right in the head, <laughs> I've gone completely la la, anyway, um, but yes, but then I had another idea, um, and I actually planted, I, I plant, plant, blah, 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 I put some seeds inside the actual mouse so that they would grow, and then I watered it. Right, what we're going to do now is we've got to the, we've got to the end. Now you've got your tail end that you began with, and you've got your tail end that you're working with. So right at the end, the tail end that you began with, you just want to pull that through, and then cut off your yarn like that and then we're going to tie this into a nice tight knot because if you're going to make it for like say for the bath or for if you want to make it for a toy for a pet and um you know like for a cat toy or something you want to make sure it's nice and tight because you don't want your stuffing to come out and and it to be ruined so then now you're going to have what looks like this i know this is <laughs> Honestly, you know my imagination when I'm crocheting things for it to turn into something nice afterwards. It amazes me sometimes. But we're going to turn this inside out or outside in, depending on how you want to say it. And the very end, you want to poke it down as hard as you can because you want to try and get that bit kind of pointed. And then where the seam is, where you've joined it, you flatten that out with your finger and your thumb. And then the tail ends, you're going to tuck those all inside and stuff those right to the very end of the nose. And they'll make the next stage of sewing easier. So you'll end up with something that looks like this and you're going to go, wow, that looks awful. But like a lot of the other things, as you know, look, this is the finished result. So you know it's going to turn out nice. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to put this piece to one side. Now you can use the same colour yarn if you want to or you can use a different one. I like to use the same one because that's just me. And now we're going to make the actual tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm doing my twist to start off with, you can do your a slip knot if you prefer. And we're going to make a chain of 20. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, <clears throat> sorry, nineteen, and twenty. 
we don't work in the first chain we ignore that one we're going to come underneath one loop of the next chain and work two single crochet if you're in the US or um, two double crochet if you're in the UK and I think it's the same terms in Canada but I'm not sure and then every single chain all the way up just underneath one loop you're going to work the two single crochet and this will form it just naturally makes your, your work form a spiral to make the tail okay so we just need to work our way all the way back to the beginning of the chain now where was I in my story oh yeah planting different things inside my mouse that's what I was doing and it gave me another idea <laughs> so I'm going to share the idea with you so that you can have a try if you want to but if you crochet a circle or a square and just make a small one just to start off with and you just use a, a little saucer or a dish or something and actually put grass seed onto your crochet little mat thing that you've made and water it the grass will grow um, if you want to feed your grass while it's growing at this stage then you can use something like tomato food because um, that's a liquid food but then you can grow these little patches of grass so that you can actually fix your own lawn so you know in the winter time sometimes you notice you've got bald patches in your grass and, and <clears throat> you want to go and put grass seed down in the spring to repair it and then the birds come and they eat all of your seeds and you're like <laughs> so if you grow them inside or grow them inside your greenhouse first you can just plant them straight into your garden eventually your yarn will biodegrade but um, I'll show you I've actually grown a cress one so you can see because they've actually already started growing you've got all of the roots already there so that when you actually first plant it into the garden as a little mat then um, you've already got yourself a head start and the birds don't pinch your seeds so um, that was my little idea and and I thought well I want to share this so um, here I am sharing my little mouse and my strange little stories of my <laughs> strange life which is definitely a bit strange at the minute but I say that's just because things just went a little bit wrong and um, I felt like I'd been sort of tips up tipped upside down and I wasn't sure of my way forward and well it definitely knocked my confidence that's for sure um, right so now I'm at the end I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the actual mouse get the tail end that you began with and pull it through the very last stitch that you've been making and then get your scissors cut that off tie this into a nice tight knot because say if you want to use it in the bath or you want to use it for a cat toy or whatever you want it to be strong you don't want it to fall to bits after a while so now I'm just I know it looks a little bit messy but if you just twizzle at it um, it forms a nice little spiral tail okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my needle I'm going to thread the two tail ends onto my needle and put that to one side Ooh, there we go and then just put that over there a minute then I'm going to get the body and to start off with I'm just going to get a little bit of the stuffing just not not more it's just enough just to cover over the tail ends that you've got in there and also because this will help when you're sewing on your nose then get your um, old tumble dry sheet and poke it in <laughs> um, you want to leave obviously leave bits of it on the outside but you poke it inside and the this will stop the seeds from actually coming through the actual work okay now I've got to see if I can do this without spilling it Ooh. I spilt a bit I'll poke that in there I can still get a bit more in I've kind of got a little bit more in there Ooh. 
and then you get the ends and you tuck all of the ends you wrap it all over so that none of your seeds are going to fall out and you tuck all of your tumble dry sheet into your mouse oh it smells lovely now if you have got enough room you can put a little bit of extra stuffing on the end but you don't have to and i'm not going to because i think that that's plenty and now you get your needle which has got your tail on it and you look at your mouse and you see this where you did your stitching so that you've got your seam and you'll see that your work actually tucks over inside you want to find the stitch where it's tucked over inside and put your needle through so you're going from the inside of your work to the outside and you pull that and pull your tail to there and then i keep my finger tucked inside and now we're going to do what is a running stitch here you're going to go in one hole and out of the other can you see that and then try and sew it without getting it tangled up and so it's going to go in and out this is actually a running stitch it's, it's the one of the earliest stitches that you'll ever learn how to use when you're learning how to sew and it's really easy because you've got all of your holes just to work through this so it's nice and neat try not to catch your, your yarn as you're doing it because otherwise it will make it harder it will snag on things and get all the way to the end here okay and then you want to go back into that very beginning bit there where it was tucked over where you actually joined your tail in just there and then pull it make sure everything's tucked in and pull it tight so it closes up the end and that rounds up the end and you end up with the thing that looks like a strange sort of carrot <laughs> I don't know what else to describe it and then just sew in you and just to make you want to make sure that it's fastened up nice and tight you don't want it so that your cat is playing with it or you run in your bath and all of a sudden everything falls to bits that'll just be a disaster so do it as neatly as you can I'm doing it on video so as usual things go wrong and it never turns out as nice and neat as all the ones that I've practiced with but it doesn't matter I'm only showing you how to do it. I'm not showing you perfection. And when you're learning, it's not, you know, it's, you're just not that good anyway. So anyway, so now I just want to tuck the tail end in. Now this is where you can actually push it through if you wanted to so that you can make your string to dangle with. But I'm not, this is not going to be a dangly mouse. So I'm just going to cut my tail end off like that. This video has taken longer than I anticipated because um, it didn't go quite right. But anyway, now you want to get your other colour, your opposite colour, whatever it is that you've decided to do for the nose. You want your yarn to be about four or six hook lengths long. Yeah, you're going to thread one end through like this. <laughs> and then you're going to get your mouse look at where the seam is where you've joined it up and look at the very end and you'll find that you've got a little hole there and a little hole the opposite side and you want to put your needle straight through the very end you pull it through and leave yourself some at the other end just so that you've got something to hold on to while you because what we're going to do is just stitch over and over to make the nose and you want to go through the same stitches over and over again just so that you're going to make this nice little nose on the end and try and cover up whatever colour it is that you've used sometimes like this this one's going to be a little teeny tiny nose sometimes you'll end up where it's just doesn't matter how many times you stitch it it misses a bit and you end up with a big fat bobbly nose but this one's little and what you're going to do is you get all of your tail ends, hold them out of the way. You want this bit to be about an inch long, which is about two and a half centimetres. And cut that off. And that makes both of your whiskers the same sort of size. Okay. I'm just going to take that off because I'm going to need my needle again in a minute. And 
move all these little white bits out of my way and I'm going back to my purpley coloured yarn it is I say it's more of a lilac to be fair and I'm going to show you how to make the ears um so you're going to cast on however you cast on whether it's slip knot or not I'm going to chain two one two and then into the first chain we're going to work six single crochet or six double crochet depending on where you're from one two three four five and six and i'm going to work straight into the first stitch we're not going to slip stitch or anything i'll just work straight into there i'm going to do two stitches in every stitch so we're going to end up with a total of 12. So that's one two three four whoops five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then slip stitch into the next stitch to finish and then cut off, <laughs> cut off your yarn, pull that tail end through, use the beginning tail end to pull the centre hole closed and then you're going to get both of your tail ends and just tie them into a nice tight knot. There's no sewing and tucking in for this one and when you do that it actually makes you get sort of a little bit of a flat end just there. So I'll put that to one side where I'm getting all tangled up <laughs> um, and I'm sorry I'm kind of trying to rush a little bit now because I feel like I'm going over my time and I, I'm concerned that my um, camera will go that's it I don't want to record anymore so, chain, so we're doing another ear so chain two and work six single crochet in the first chain so that's two three four five and six straight back into the next one and work two stitches all the way around one two three four five <clears throat> sorry six seven ooh. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and slip stitch into the first stitch to finish. Cut off my tail end, pull that one through, pull the centerpiece tight, and then crack me all these tail ends, honestly. And then tie it into a nice tight knot. Okay, now I want you to get your, both of your tail ends, thread them onto your needle, and I'll show you where to sew the ears so that. Right, so what you're going to do is we want to make the ears so that they're kind of tucked over. So if you look at your work, you've got this little bit in the centre where it's looking a bit bad, where you've sewn together. You want to put your needle through the first stitch there and then through the next stitch there and pull that through and that helps pinch the ear together to give it a nice little effect. Then you want to get your mouse, you need to make sure your stitching is at the bottom and then we're going to, from his nose, you count up five rows, so it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to use these holes now, so what you're going to do is you're going to go into one hole Ignore two and come out the third. Yeah? And then you pull in your ear. Sometimes your ear will go on back to front. You can twizzle it around, it's okay. Now you want to work back into that same stitch, but what you want to do is you want to go into the actual stuffing or into the lavender or whatever it is that's in that point there, through everything and back through the exact same hole where you put the ear. 
and pull that through. If you go through exactly the same place that you did in the beginning, your ear will just come off. So you've got to make sure you go into your work. Then you want to go back into the bottom two stitches there just to help pinch them together nicely. Back into the same hole that you actually worked your ear in the beginning. Ignore the two holes and come out in the third. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see well. And then sew it on. Try not to get yourself all wrapped around his nose and everything. You can do that a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and secure. But I'm cheating a little bit and I'm going to come out now. Oh, you can see I'm making a mess with the lavender as I've pierced the the inside bits there and I'm going to get my second ear and we're going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to be coming out through the hole where we've actually stitched the other ear so if we get our work remember to go through the first little loops there and that and there just to pinch it over and then you're going to go into this hole here, we're skipping the two and coming out in the same space that we actually fixed the other ear. Oh, that one's back to front, twizzle it around, pull it nice and tight, back into the same hole. Make sure you go underneath and through the other bits of your stuffing inside, just so that you make sure it's nice and secure. And then want to go through the bottom chains it's not actually a chain, is it? There was single crochets, I'm telling you rubbish. <laughs> and then back through the same space and through to where you've sewn the other ear. Okay, so then you've got both of your ears attached. I say, normally I do extra stitching, but because I know that I'm taking a lot of time, I'm just going to come out of the way there and cut that off myself all tangled up and then because I cheat <laughs> it's just so much easier get my, my marker pen and then I look at my look just look and I just decide where I want the eyes to be and so I get I look at that and I say oh I want one there so I'm just going to put my pen in give it a twizzle leave one gap between one space and then twizzle in the other side and it just gives it its eyes and there you go so, um, yours will probably be a little bit quicker than mine because obviously I'm chattering and messing about during my video. But there you go. There is one cute little lavender mouse which smells absolutely delightful. Um, and just so that you can see, I'm just going to get you whoop, the crest that I was growing. Just to show you that because this has grown, I'm going to tip it upside down look, so that you can see. I just It was just a round piece of... Um, fact we know like where I crocheted it up just some single crochet we can see all of the roots so you could see that if you do make the little grass mats then they're so easy just to go and plant and um well if you like the smell of cress it smells nice I particularly don't but um I just thought I'd just share that because it's just and I did actually this is the mouse one this is the second attempt because the first one died <laughs> but you can see that um if you do it properly you can actually make your mouse kind of look like a hedgehog, but this was a failure. So I just thought I'd just share that one as well. So there you go. How to crochet. Cute little mouse. Um, so if you use different size yarns, you're going to get different sizes for your mice. So there you can see, look, where I've just used different ones. And you can see it depends on how you stuff it and, and you sew in at the end of the day, whether they end up with like little fat mice or little skinny ones. But... They get all kind of cute. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for putting up with me and all my little disastrous moments. You know, I think that we all have the odd one or two in life, don't we? Okay, thanks again. Bye for now.